Okay, um, today is the 21st of December and I've been really meaning to get around to doing this video. Okay, now what I wanted to share was um, actually some of the hardware that I use uh, to record our own music at home. So I thought today I'd go ahead and do that and I'd break it down into three sections um, of hardware. Your inputs, putting the sound um, into your system, your process, so obviously uh, editing that on the computer, and then finally your outputs, how you're actually going to listen to what you just recorded. So uh, let's get straight into it. Now obviously the first input you're going to have is your instruments. So in my case, saxophone. Um, for those of you that sing, obviously it's going to be your voice. Um, the drum kit, uh, whatever it might be. But obviously that's the thing that's going to create the sound. And I know that sounds obvious, but I feel it necessary for us to actually cover that. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need um, to actually record your audio is a microphone. And this particular microphone is a Shure Prolog 12H. It's very, very old. Uh, it's probably older than me, actually, and I'm 19. Um, now, although this is probably more than 20 years old, this microphone is absolutely phenomenal. And Shure have a proven track record of being one of the best microphone brands in the world for reliability. And it's just been around for so long. Um, I've used quite a few Shure uh, microphones, um, I definitely recommend them. Now the next thing on the list um, is actually something that you're going to want to put your microphone on. Uh, so for that reason, um, I came into purchase of this microphone stand. Um, it's pretty standard really, um, I inherited it. Um, there's not a great deal to say about this except that it just puts your microphone, you can put your microphone in the top here. Uh, and the height is adjustable. Um, for those who might play piano, you might want to look into a, a boom arm mic, um, which actually has a part that comes up here, and then there is a pivot point, and a second arm which comes down horizontally, which is great for you know reaching over instruments or desks or a keyboard if you have one. If you sing and play piano at the same time, so once you've you've captured the audio in the microphone, obviously you're going to want that to go somewhere. So the next thing you're going to need is what's known as an XLR connector, which actually um, goes into the microphone and it's got three prongs, as you can see there, and the female end of that looks like this, and that will go into your microphone like so. Now oftentimes, for a lot of people recording, on the other end of this lead they may have another XLR connector, but for me, what I have on the end of this lead is a 6.3mm stereo jack which actually looks like this and this is pretty much the industry standard of course the other type of audio jack you have is a 3.5mm headphone lead uh, this is what is used very very often so you have your microphone, you have your XLR lead and then you have your stereo jack on the other end now obviously that audio is going to need to go somewhere else so the next thing I have here um, is actually a mixer from a DJ in a box um, mixing kit that I purchased about two years ago. This is a Newmark DN950. Um, it's pretty old and it's pretty simple as far as mixers go. Um, but like I've said before, it does the job and that's all I really need it to do. And for the purpose of actually recording your own audio, using a mixer is possibly, for me, one of the best things I can do instead of recording straight into the computer. What you can see here on the front is a jack that says microphone and that is where our microphone is going to be plugged in so as we can see here so the audio from our microphone is now transmitted into this mixer so where does it go from here well if we look on the back you will see that it says output right here and there's two jacks two female jacks one white and one red and that is known as an auxiliary cable a red and white cable um, and the reason they're colour coded is just to make it easier for you to be able to tell the difference because there is two jacks merging into one wire and an auxiliary cable will look like this as you can see there is a red and white band uh, just down the shaft of these, these two male leads and these actually merge into one so if we take our mixer on the back we can see where it says output, we want to be plugging uh, those two auxiliary leads straight into the back there. So the sound from our microphone is now travelling into the mixer. We can adjust the volume 
with master and microphone volume there which uh, for some is necessary to boost that volume um, and then that sound is then being outputted through this red and white auxiliary uh, cable now on the other end um, of this auxiliary cable we have another two plugs another two red and white auxiliary jacks now of course most computers nowadays because that is the next stage that is our process uh, do not have auxiliary inputs so we need to transfer this to something that is you know PC friendly so what I have here um, is a female auxiliary red and white cable to three and a half mil headphone jack so basically all we do is we just connect these both up so we now have a jack that can plug into our computer so our audio can now move directly into the computer for us to be able to manipulate and do whatever we like with it and be able to record it okay so now we come to the process part and obviously this is going to involve your computer now for some that you might find it a little bit confusing navigating your way around all of the audio inputs you might find at the back of your computer so what I've gone and devised is a small drawing demonstrating the simplest inputs on your computer for recording audio. Now as you can see um, your computer's audio should be colour coded, there should be a small colour band around the outside of where the jack is supposed to go um, and on mine pink, blue and green even though that looks like brown, doesn't, doesn't look very pinkish. Um, these are the three inputs that you're going to need to just be concerned about um, to make sure that you do plug uh, your audio input into the right jack. So for this instance, we can see that the first one here, pink, says mic in, the second one in the middle says audio out, and the third one, blue, says audio in. So for the sake of recording our own music through a microphone, obviously we're going to be want to focus in on the, the pink one, which says microphone in. So you're going to want to be plugging your 3.5mm audio jack straight into the, uh, the mic in jack around the back of your computer. Now if you're using a laptop, this diagram might not apply, you may only have two actual audio jacks. The first one being a headphone socket or audio out, and the second one being your microphone jack, which is all well and good. Um, you can easily do this with one line-in jack, um, my computer actually has two, so which gives me the availability to plug my microphone in and another audio in cable, which could very well be another microphone. So now we've gone all the way through microphone, through to mixer, and then through to this audio jack, and then into our computer. So the next stage really um, is the output. How are you going to hear that sound? Now I'm going to address actually recording uh, digitally your own music um, in another video, which will be part two, which will be software. But for the time being, I'm going to skip straight past the computer stage and into uh, listening to what you've just produced. So obviously your um, output hardware. So for most, um, the primary way you're going to listen to the sound that you're going to output from your computer is with a pair of headphones. So the pair of headphones that I have are Sennheiser HD 205s. Now I bought these for 45 English pounds and you can find them today a year later um, retailing for about 25 to 30 pounds. So they've dramatically gone down in price preferably because a whole new range of Sennheiser headphones has, has come out and stormed the market. Now, on the other end of this headphone cable, um, you're going to find another 3.5 audio jack. And I've had to actually do some repairs on this because it, it did break. Um, and of course this is going to be uh, plugged into your computer um, in the audio out jack or the headphone jack. There will probably be a little symbol there. Um, but for some, you may find your headphone cable to just be too short. If you've got a specific area in your home where you know you're going to want to record to be able to have enough room, this cable might just not reach. So what I invested in is one of these, which is a female to female headphone connector. And what that enables you to do, it enables you to take your headphone jack, plug it in, then take another audio lead, which is two male to male um, headphone jacks. I think this is a one and a half meter lead and it enables you to plug that into the other end and you now have essentially an extension cable for your headphones of you know another one and a half or two meters which really means that you've extended the cable length um, so you can go ahead and not worry about getting yourself tangled or not having enough cable to just be able to move around when you're trying to record so that's your headphones done
Um, why should you use headphones instead of speakers? Um, this may seem like a very common question to ask, but the reason being is the feedback you're going to get from using speakers when recording your own music. Now, of course, you're going to want to listen to the track that you're going to be recording along with, and if you do this on speakers, what it's going to mean is the speakers are going to output that sound. Your microphone, if it's a dynamic or a condenser mic, it's going to pick up that sound and it's going to push it straight back through the system. And eventually you're going to get absolutely awful feedback and you're just not going to be able to listen to what you're trying to record. Because what it creates is an infinite loop of sound um, and it's just going to be disastrous to record in. So that's why headphones are the favoured form of listening to a backing track when you're recording your own music and that's why it's pretty much essential to have a pair of headphones. So that covers um, really all of the basics of recording your own equipment, all of the hardware done. So in part two I'm just going to be addressing um, some of the software that I use, what you're going to need to set up to be able to record your own audio efficiently um, and in, in the most simple way that you can really. Ciao!